Well, Super Saturday is in the books for round 20. There was a lot of high scoring games, including this one here, the 44 to 24 win for the Broncos of the Dogs. And this really, I think, just showed what the Broncos can do, even with their big stars out in Haas and also Carrigan there. And then they finish off the game really well without Reynolds, which sounds like it's precautionary for anyone that does own him. Um, but yeah, he did really well up until that uh, wrist injury uh, with 10 minutes to go. So that's that. And let's go look to a few of the top players there. And we had Corey Waddell with 75. So he seemed to be involved in everything, running the ball plenty, offloads, tackle breaks, and obviously that try near the end of that Max King pass, which we would have loved to be a try assist, but it never is in this kind of game, obviously. Because he didn't actually do anything. He just passed it to him. Okay, so that's Corey. Uh, very, very cheap. Eh? He's lost a lot of cash. He seems to be one of those guys that gets a 70 odd and gets 20. That's his regular. All right, Jacob Karaz in the centers. So didn't change the amount of time, the amount that he got the ball. I think it got him better ball, to be honest with you. And then obviously four offloads and 10 tackle breaks will we'll demonstrate that. And this is a lot more like what he was doing at the start of the season. And he's a very, very interesting guy in the wing fullback position at what, 440 or whatever he's going to be next week as that sort of cash down guy. But you know, the Bulldogs, look, this is a great team. So they are, they are going to play teams like this on a regular basis. Obviously, teams with a bit more go forward, a bit more starch for the middle is going to be helpful um, yeah, for the t for, for Broncos. But uh, for the Dogs there, yeah, they're going to come up against some better teams now that you know players aren't backing up from Origin and, and things like that. But I still think he's going to be solid for sure. Reynolds is in there, obviously, with 64. Did great. Preston with 64. Got that early try. I, just, I didn't expect it this week just because I thought the, the Broncos' defense was a little bit stronger. That was Kurt Capewell's side. So, yeah, anyway... Big long reach on him. He's a big boy. Um, just got to the line there and got that try. And then 45 tackles for a two misses there. Absolutely did what he needed to do. And Reed Marnie, the other one there. So you end up with a try saver and a try assist. But 51 tackles for two misses is massive for his game. Bit of kicking out dummy half. A little bit of running as well. So 62 for him. And, and he's one of those cut price mid-range guys. Very similar to that of Max King that you know that could get you probably a 45 average or something like that fairly comfortably and, and this is obviously an up game for, for Reedy and there will be games where he gets to 39 or something like that but you know he's definitely someone that you could slot into your side as a, a 17th man kind of thing and, and he'll do a good job for you most weeks anyway uh, obviously a little bit up and down Billy Walter's got to try a pick Kura. so he had a, a very good game and obviously he was against the dog so you can't put everything into that but he played much better 22 tags for three misses is, is kind of his norm though so that's where you're missing out and he usually isn't running the footy that much he did make a line break so some extra run meters that he normally wouldn't get but uh yeah did pick up a line break a try assist and then got a try at the end there off a kick so pick her up he grabbed him great cash down did really really well for this this week for you and then Avrilo got the couple of tries as well. So he did, uh, did a great job for anyone who did grab him last week, especially. We kind of warned people off him from here just because they had the, the Broncos this week and then Panthers next week. And Panthers will be full strength. So I'm not expecting the world out of Avrilo next week, but really running the footy well, 122 meters and seven tackle breaks. So yeah, he definitely done what you would have hoped um, that, he, that he'd done. Maxi King absolutely did his job and a little bit more. So a little bit more bang for his buck than uh yeah than what he's priced at there at 520. So he's priced lower than that 44. So anything above about a 40 here was very much a, a good thing here. And the minutes was a little bit lower than last week. So if we got that extra five or ten minutes, then we'd be sitting close to that 50 mark. I'd say above 50 there. Thankfully there was no there was no missed tackles in there. There was just the one penalty. He had the one offload near the end and the one tackle break. So again in a game that was super high scoring, the 29 tackles is is about par. So you'd expect when, when the game's a little bit closer sometimes, which not always is going to happen for dogs, he'll be able to make that few extra tackles. But again, he's one of those 17th man type of guys that I'll slot in my side. So that was my first trade of the week, guys. I ended up going Robson to King, just in the order of, of when they played. Um, yeah, I was trying to work that out. That way, it seemed like I was going to do the three trades of, of Robson, Turpin, and then also Val. But Val's actually playing now, so it's, it's likely going to be tough today, which I'll, I'll go through my trades as that team comes up just to keep you in the loop of where I'm at with that one. Tristan Saylor, a better game for him with two try assists. He had Tavita Pangai 43 in his 35 minutes, so very solid in the time that he was in the park. Not a lot of time, but uh, did a much better job today and helped set up that try, uh, their first try of the dogs there. Uh, Palisade, a really good, ga really good game for him. 60 minutes in the end without Carrigan, without Haas. Uh, this is uh, to be expected sometimes, but obviously he'll go back to a limited minute role from next week. Yet Herbie Farnworth with a try there off a kick. 
Um, and yeah, 37 for him. So not his best one, but yeah, you cop that sometimes when the next week he gets 60 odd for sure. Matt Burton with 33, again, not his best game. So after last week's demolition job that he did, this week is back to a 33. So he will still be that up and down scorer, especially against the better teams. And you'll probably see this next week against the Panthers there for sure. Okay, let's move on that little bit further. We've got Sexton down there. So he did cop, um, he did cop an injury there. Hopefully he'll be back for next week. It sounds like it was cat two symptoms, which means he's not necessarily out for next round. So if you did want to, if you did grab him or you were interested, he was scoring fairly well. And it looks like he'll be closer to a, a 45 or so point player here at the dogs as well. Just with the, the amount of work that he goes through, he didn't have to kick too much in this one in that first half, but you know, in there for a line break, he got the, the try assist as well. Travall Skelton was someone I actually was interested in. And if you look at our Booze Clues, our number one team, he actually brought him in as a cash down. And, and that's for covering the centers. And once I found out that Val was actually playing, um, that just completely went out the window. And the fact that he's playing Broncos and also the Panthers, that were the two things that stopped me. But as a center cash down for cover, because I wouldn't have had it with Val, that's uh, definitely an option for some people at 222K. He'll be a little bit higher than that after this week, just a little bit. Um, but he actually looks like he's such a big body and, and 180 meters run is good. But I d again, not expecting him to score anything decent next week. Um, and that has a buy following that in a couple of weeks. So yeah, that's it on him. Blake Wilson, 23, was fine. That's all you can say for there. Curtis Moran, 9 in 25 minutes. Pretty yucky there. Okay, we move on to the next game there, and that's the Eagles and the Cowboys. So no trades I made in this one. Obviously, didn't have Robson, was, so was ho hoping for him to have a fairly low one, um, which he did fine. Yeah, Lucy Lua, who I, who I spoke about a while ago, is being at, you know, half an option there, and he just did it all without any attacking stats, which is incredible. It's 72 points there. Great, great work from him. Um, yeah, you can't expect anything anything more out of him, really. Like, he just continues to... to you know, on and off dominate, to be honest with you. Go 50-50, he goes a 40-odd, 70-odd, you know, and he's still priced at 536. So, yeah, great work from him. Val Holmes as well. I know a lot of people were frustrated with him. I was talking to a few people last night that had him from the start of the season and had him all the way through to origin. And yes, he's missed a bunch of games in this period, but every time he comes out in the park, he, this is I think this is his lowest score in the last, like, four games or something. So, very, very impressive from Val, and he's such a good player. Runs an incredible line and does a great job. For people asking about just drink water and was he a must-have, it's pretty close, man. He's doing this with ease at the moment. So line break, try, line break assist there. And then just you're running the footy. And he's so good. So good. He's in such good form. Jacob Boyevich, a few people asked me about. And, and yeah, he's definitely like a 48 to 52 point player. Um, and this one, he did a really good job there with 58, with 54 tackles and 100 meters. So Jakey Boy, he's going to hit that 50 average pretty regularly. So he has about 50K to make. So up to you on him. But I, again, I'm not looking for these type of mid -range, mids at the moment that are close to that peak price, close to a 700K or 50 point average kind of thing, but they're not the top of the line. That's why he we went for King. It just saved us 120, compared to him, 127K. And then he could use that cash elsewhere to get a Fafita, you know, step up basically to get a Fafita, to get a Cleary uh, or whatever you want from here. I actually really noticed that a lot of people double traded with Cherry Evans and Munster. So really incredible work from there just to get two guys, obviously, that are going to hit really a 57 to 62 type of average and, and they're underpriced. So really, really good way to, to be able to, instead of going for other mid, you know, 700K guys, 650K guys that you're like, oh, they could get back to their best. We know that DCE and Munster, obviously the focal points of their team and super important players and they're going to score that bit better and at least make that minimum 50K or something like that. So they're underpriced and be able to score really well for you. So that worked out great. DCE with 54, I was kind of death riding these guys a little bit, sorry. Um, I had Munster in Supercoach, so I was happy for him to go well. But uh, DCE, I was like, simmer, simmer. And he had one, uh, a couple of good runs there. Where he had you know, plenty of run meters and tackle breaks and then a little cheeky offloads and stuff like that. But 54, you'll take that obviously a little bit above where he's priced at, which is cool. And uh, you expect better from next week. A few of the games, uh, the ga one game he played after Origin, he got a 40-odd. So you take the 54, that's for sure. Uh, Nene, he's been better, 47 for him. Had a much better year, I think, just running the footy. So up to 95 metres, a little bit better. Still a few errors and a few penalties in his game, but he was solid. Ruben Garrick, so he really turned it on in the back half there because he had the knock to the face and they took him off for the for the 13 minutes it was in the end. Um, and yeah, the line break, the, the tri-saver tackle breaks there, 183 metres. He is involved in everything and he should be a 50-point scorer going forward. Yeah, if he happens to get a try, take away the try saver. These kind of things will get him to that point. 
um, and he'll be fine and he'll be a great asset to have. But 45, you'll take it. You were hoping for a little bit more, obviously, in this game, but uh, 45, you'll take it after where he was at in that first half. You had Paseca with 45 there, Robson the 44, 44 tackles there, and a little bit of running, 72 meters for two tackle breaks. So good thing he played the 80 for those who grabbed him. I did end up obviously getting Harry Grant. So, you know, straight swap basically, Robson for Harry Grant, if you look at it that way. Picked up an extra 18 points this week, and I've got the gun for the year rather than having the, the second or third, you know, best in that position. So happy with that as, as an overall trade this week. And thankfully that, you know, Grant turned it around, which we'll speak about in a second, and end up doing really well. We look down further and, uh, yeah, too long. He just did it again. This is very, very cheap. Dearden with a lower gain this week. Cotter with 31 with a try. So, yeah, just the minutes for him this week. Obviously, you know, he's going to ramp up come the end of the year. And he's a sneaky one that if you do have to make a trade or two at the back end, so if something happens and, you know, you're looking at, you know, Payne Haas having a buy in round 25 and you need to you swap, straight swap him, you have two trades left to go Cotter uh, for the cheaper option in the mids and then you go up to a top gun in another position. Yeah, you know, he could be really cheap by that point. I think he'll ramp up coming into that last few rounds and then he'll be ready to launch uh, into the finals, which is exciting, which it sounds like and seems like the, the Cowboys will be in the finals this year, which is just wild. And actually have a really good shot at, at going all the way, which is which is just crazy. Uh, Finnafiaki had another line break and did really well. Yeah, Cola just absolutely gone off a cliff this year. 27 he's averaging, which is not good. And if you brought in Aaron Woods, Sharon, 12 off 26. There he is. What a man. Okay, my second trade of the round, I went Turpin to Harry Grant, which worked out really, really well. I was super stressed out at nine off 35 minutes or whatever craziness that was at that point, uh, but he really turned it on and, and got the the try himself. He should have had a try earlier on in the game, so it just shows that he's absolutely everywhere, and this is the first week I've owned him this year, and I really should have started the year with him. I didn't. That is okay. I finally brought him in for this one. And I suppose just what, like thinking about it this morning was, yeah, with Grant, that the amount of times that he's been on a very low score at halftime, he's been on 20 or something like that. And I'm like, yes, we're, we're on for a 45 or under 50 or something here. And then he just comes out and gets the attacking stats. And it's just him, isn't it, to a T. 34 tackles for five misses. So he's only getting 24 in that. He obviously runs the footy pretty regularly, but uh, yeah, five tackle breaks. He gets involved in the tries and the tries there. Um, and just shows the connectivity between a few of these guys. You know, Grant just... You know, cut a couple of a, a cutout pass straight into to Hughes's arms, and and he goes over untouched, which is really good. Tupo with sixty four, very good score. You know, from his low price point, Munster with fifty eight there, and he, him and Grant both went off with five minutes to go. Both did their job. Obviously, got the win in this one, which is really important to keep them in touch with the top four. Munster with two try assists off his boot, which was cool. Uh, three offloads in this one. Plenty of running the footy as always. Kicking, kicking meters as well. So 58 for him. You, you're going to expect this on a regular basis, whether it's a try for him or it's a try, a couple of try assists to go along with it, with the rest of the stats. So good stuff. If you did trade him in, he was just a slightly better option than uh, than DCE this week. But I think they'll both be the same uh, going forward. Husey with 56 along with Rads. So if you do own Husey, awesome score. Radzi, no one really owns him, but a full 80 minute display without getting uh, sent off. How good. Uh, Coates there, 55 with three tries. Obviously, a length of the field one helped him out, and then he had like 60 meters other than that, which is funny. Uh, but great score from him. He's going to he's gonna make some more cash. Joey Manu, 49. So it kind of did his job, I suppose, in this fullback slot with without Teddy, without, uh, you know, obviously a few of their best players injured and stuff, and, and they're just not great, are they? So he actually looks like he has a better right-to-left pass than he does, obviously, the left-to-right, which is where he was popping up a fair bit, um, which is crazy because he plays right center you think you'd have a better left to right pass but it seemed better the other way which is funny billy smith had a good score as well 47 on uh, on his front which is really really good obviously uh not expecting that every week but had some had some offloads and tackle breaks this time and obviously had a a try assist with you know all the work that daniel tupo was doing down the left side me the 44 really really solid yeah trent Liero, 44 as well God, he's frustrating. We only needed to get 40s a bunch of weeks ago and not lose a truck of cash. And, and then he's gone two back-to-back, 49 and 44 here, which is frustrating. Welch, 43. Nelson, the 39. So he's an interesting one. 61 minutes, a little bit less than he has been playing. Um, and I think they'll try to get him to play about that 60 going forward. And he may move back to the mid as well if Eli Katoa comes back. So a lower score from him, but I suppose you take that with all of the high ones you've had recently. And that butcher, I cannot work this guy out. Seriously, he, he looks like he's an absolute world beater some weeks, and then he gets thirty odd. It happens every time, and it's why I can't push people to buy him because this will happen. Like if I told it, yeah, you know, people to buy, people ask me about him, they're like, uh, 
yeah, he's okay. But I think, you know, the other, other options are probably better. Like you'd rather go, obviously with Yo out, you'd, you'd rather go out to him, but he's out. No Fodder Waker and stuff like that. Just all similar options. He seems to go 60 or 60 or 30, 40. And it's like, why? It's hard to work him out. And um, this was another one of those games where it's just like nothing happened for him. So yeah, obviously I think against lesser teams, he might be able to do really well, like get some attacking stats, but and then the other games, he'll leave 55 tackles. It's like, where's that Where's that change? It's like 16 tackles is a lot. So there you go. Uh, Sandon Smith, you end up getting up that little bit higher. So you got a turnover tackle and a try saver just to help out his score. Get him to a 34. Obviously, did a little bit across the board with an offload, a tackle break. But uh, if you brought him in, you're hoping for a little bit more. I was expecting about the, the 40 mark. So six off that without the goal kicking. He, he did fine, obviously. Um and it's a solid cash down. It's going to score each week. Sammy Walker, I don't believe, is going to be close to being back. So that's that there. Uh, so really he got two goals. So you would have missed out on four points, basically. So very close to where we would expect him about that 40 mark. Uh, is there anyone lower? Turpin, yeah. Turpin, the big one. So very, very lucky in the end that I did trade Turpin out. He was 19 in 17 minutes and I was blowing. I wasn't happy. I was like, because I was could, could have traded between him or Chance to look start. And I went for Turpin in the end. And yeah. Um, could have been annoying, but it's ended up working out. They only played the 30 minutes and, and Brandon Smith just under him there who scored less in 20 extra minutes, played um, obviously a lot more minutes and, and did okay in that, in that role. But I thought Turpin would be about a 50 odd and, and Smithy might move into the middle a little bit. Um, but it's a very surprising he actually played the full 50 because he absolutely looked, he looked, played the full second half. He looked absolutely gassed, but yeah, so good trade in the end from Turpin. And I think that if this is going to go on further, you have to trade him out, obviously. Um, and then we'll leave it at that, guys. That's uh, the, the end of the Saturday games. We do have three to come as well on Sunday, and I wish you all the best of luck. I think I have more players today um, than I did for the first four games. So I think I'm sitting at nine left. I've got uh, Buller in the loop slot, eight down, nine to come, and I likely will be trading Blake Taff to David Fafita. How exciting does that sound? Good luck today, guys, and we'll see you next one.